All right. Um, next hand here is a pretty interesting hand here. Um, I, ha I have ace-10 off, and I go ahead and raise because it's folded to me, which is pretty standard. And the guy in the small blind, uh, Silky's Nuts, um, he re-raises us to 1550. Now, this is, this is a pretty strong raise for a couple of reasons. First of all, uh, the guy in the big blind, Ace Fetish, he only has uh, eight big blinds left after he's posted. So what that means is that he is going to be a little more desperate, and he's going he's gonna to push all in if he has any kind of playable hand here. And with the fact that I've already entered the pot, you know, he has to be thinking, uh, this guy Silky's nuts, he has to be thinking about the fact that I could come along as well. So with him re-raising, he's potentially creating a pretty big pot preflop. So I think that he has to have a stronger hand than usual to be doing this. Um, the second reason why it's probably, excuse me, a stronger raise than usual is because he is in the small blind and he is going to have to act first, you know, which as I mentioned is a pretty big positional disadvantage. So I think he has a tighter range than than usual here. And then, like I had mentioned, uh, the big blind does in fact push all in. Now most people will look at this situation and say, okay, it's only 1370 more to me. You know, and I have ace 10 off, which you know is a pretty decent hand, so I should call. But actuality, it's um, it's really not that good of a call. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up a program here, just to kind of go into a little bit of detail. Um, this is a program called Poker Stove, and what it is is um, it's a hand equity calculator. What you do is you basically use it to input your hand. And you basically take the range of hands that you feel that your opponents are likely to have given their actions. And it basically, all it does is it it kind of evaluates your equity versus that range of hands. So we're going to take this guy, um, Silky's Nuts, who we, who we thought probably has a, a pretty tight range of hands. So we're going to assign him somewhere around probably like the top top five percent or so. I think that's a pretty um I think that's a pretty decent range. Uh you know, nines, tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces, uh ace king off, ace king suited, uh ace queen suited, king queen suited, ace jack suited. Um it probably ace queen off two here, so uh, we're, we're gonna throw that in. Um okay. And then our other player here, Ace Fetish who was on the smaller stack um, he's on a much wider range because, like I said, he is a little bit desperate to double up here. He's going to be pushing with any pair, um, most aces, um, suited aces, probably down to like ace seven suited or ace six suited. Uh, most of your high cards, like king queen, queen jack, queen ten, and, and king ten, and your you know your suited face cards as well. Um, a decent amount of those, and also. Um, you know, a pretty decent amount of suited connectors. Um, I would say probably, yeah, about 22, 22, 23% um, is probably a reasonable range to assign him. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit evaluate. As you can see, um, the way our hand stacks up against these other hands is um, it shows us that we have 21, about 21.5% equity against what we perceive to be uh, the hand ranges of our opponents. So what does that mean as far as our hand and the decision that we want to make? Well, um, we there we have 39.20 in the pot, and we're going to have to call uh, 13.70 to win 39.20. So we're getting right at about three to one, um, which fortunately the replayer shows that for us. If you look in the upper right hand under info, is it kind of tells you all that, which, you know, when you're in a gameplay situation, you kind of just have to make those um, calculations on the fly, which isn't hard, but, <clears throat> excuse me. So, when you have, when you're getting 3 to 1 pot odds, the way you think about that in terms of your probability of winning the hand is, uh, you kind of look at that like 75 to 25, you know, that's, that's the same as 3 to 1. So, what we have to be thinking is that we need to be at least a 75 to 25 underdog here. If we're if we're any bigger than a 25 percent underdog, then this is actually a bad call. And as you can see here, um, 
we're not quite getting that 25% we need. Um, we're sitting right around 21%. So um, from an expected value standpoint, it's a bad call. And what I mean by that is that if you were to make this call, you know, over the span of thousands of times, eventually um, you would come out on the negative end of it. So with that in mind, I think it's a hand that you just need to fold. Um, you're you're in bad shape a pretty decent amount of the time. So we do fold, and this guy calls, and as we had presumed, he does have a tight range ace-king. Um, the short stack had ace-queen, so we were completely crushed uh, pre-flop there, which makes us feel even better that, that, that we folded. However, as you see, the board plays out with the jack coming on the river that we would have hit an improbable straight to win the hand. So kind of sucks, but you can't be results oriented in poker. You just have to say, hey, you know what? I made the best play. You know, let's just move on and, and not really think about it. So um, we don't get too many hands for a little while here that that we're in a position to play. And then um, uh, I think somebody raises here, and we can't call with Ace Jack. Um, all right, so here we get Queens, and it folds to us. We raise, and he f he folds. So nothing major there. Okay, here's an interesting hand. Um, we have a guy that min raises under the gun, and when somebody min raises and they have a small stack like this guy has, where he he doesn't have that much more than ten big blinds. It's usually indicative of one of two things. Either he has a hand that he feels is decent enough to raise with. However, it's not a very strong hand, so he doesn't want to commit a lot of his stack. So he just min raises. Or it's the exact polar opposite, meaning that he has a absolute monster hand. And he doesn't really want to scare anybody out of the pot. So that's why he just min raises. Um, be it that there's a lot of weak players in this field, um, I tend to lean more towards the former that they don't really have that strong of a hand, they're just kind of raising because they're just kind of hoping everyone will fold and it's you know not really that strong of a hand. So I elect to to re-raise uh, because I do have a strong hand, I have ace-queen suited and I want to re-raise to isolate him and play heads up against him in position. And he thinks about it for a minute and then he shoves all in. And if you notice uh, in the chat box on the bottom left he says, Psy, I keep running king-king into ace-ace. So apparently he's thinking that we have aces and he's pretty much telling us that he has pocket kings. Now this is an interesting position to be in. A lot of people would say, oh well you should uh, just go ahead and fold if, if he has kings because you're behind. Uh, and while we may very well be behind, you have to look at the fact that he doesn't have that many more chips. We already have 1200 committed here. and we only have to call off another 1585. Um, so we have to call 1585 to win a pot of 4570. So once again we're getting 3 to 1 odds like we were getting in the ace 10 hand. However, the difference between this hand and that ace 10 hand is that is that now with this hand we are getting the right equity. You know, before when I did that calculation and we only had 21% equity, we weren't getting enough. Here with ace queen, even if he does turn up with pocket kings, the fact that we have an ace so we can hit an ace, we're suited and so we have flush possibility and we have straight possibility. Um, the fact that we're heads up with just him, and it's not multi-way like it was in that last hand, the fact that we're heads up, uh, we easily have at least 30% equity against pocket kings here. So by, by a, a, a pot odds way of thinking, this is a correct call even though we do know that we are behind. So we do call. He does turn up pocket kings. And we spike our ace and we bust him out. So good times. And we are back to being the uh, the big stack at the table, which is always a good thing. And here we have ace king suited. We raise it to 580. And this player moves all in um, right there in front of us. So basically, the way that I perceive this is that this is a guy that he doesn't have a really small chip stack, but he has a kind of delicate chip stack that's like right in that 15 to 18 big blind range. And when people do this, they tend to do it with a hand that they feel is strong. 
and they'd they they'd like to just take down the blinds because they think that maybe somebody else is just stealing so they want to just go ahead and take down the blinds without having to see a flop because if this guy had a really monster hand like queens or kings or aces he would more than likely you know raise to like 1200 or something to kind of keep me in the pot um, and not scare me off so I think he's more inclined to do this with a hand that's strong but not very strong so the fact that we have ace king suited means that we match up very well against the hands that he's gonna just randomly spaz shove all in with so we're definitely calling I mean worst case scenario he has a hand like tens or jacks and we're in a coin flip scenario which given the fact that we have him out chipped would not really be a disaster however it's a better case than that because he has ace queen so we have him dominated and we just have to dodge a queen and we do so now we've built up the chip stack even more we're at, we're at 16k with blinds at 122.40 so you know we have around 80ish big blinds let's see here moving on hand 107 um, okay th th this is a really interesting hand here uh, we have jack 10 suited the guy on the button raises to 755 which is totally standard um, some people would would want to re-raise here because they see him as stealing um, I elect to just call uh, the reason I do is because jack 10 suited is a hand that uh, plays well post flop and when you re-raise here you're basically he's basically only calling with the hands that are better than jack 10 and he's folding all the hands that are worse so we're kinda of turning it into a bluff which there's not a lot of value in doing that pre-flop so we call uh, we get a great flop so we have a flush draw here plus we have our two overs so we have nine outs to make a flush and we have you know three jacks or three tens we could hit so it gives us a total of 15 outs now if he has if he has a really monster hand like sevens or fours or deuces and like he has three of a kind then in that case we're we're certainly not a favorite we do have equity in the hand but we're not a favorite if he has like a a top pair hand or like a middle pair hand like you know pocket eights pocket nines or like a seven in that case even though we only have a drawing hand quote unquote we're actually a favorite here we are we are definitely a favorite against just a one pair hand so given that like I really don't have a problem with playing a big pot here uh, we check to him uh, he bets 1355 into a pot of you know around 2000 and I think about it for a minute and I uh, shove all in and the reason I do this is kinda of for two reasons um it, it basically gives you more than one way to win the hand um, first way is that you know this guy has a decent amount of chips left behind so he's in a position where he could easily just say you know fuck it and fold it's not worth it um, which is obviously great for us if he does that the other way we can win is if he does decide to call um, we're very very rarely in bad shape against him you know because we have so many outs to hit a hand um, if he does call it's not a disaster at all we can win the hand at, at, at showdown so we have two ways to win the hand there um, the conventional way of thinking is oh you know I'll just call his uh, his bet here but you know if you think about it when you do that you're only giving yourself one way to win you know you have to win at showdown so I would prefer to just kinda of take the slightly more aggressive route and uh, you know put this guy to the ultimate test as to whether he wants to play for his entire chip stack because we do have him out chipped um, if you were to to switch it up and you know the guy to his right KCX if you would put him in this hand with his stack of 21,000 um, then I would not make this play we're basically making this play because this guy uh, Mosai1986 whatever his name is he basically has um, the ideal chip stack to sort of make this you know high pressure play so that's what we do um, and he folds so it works out good for us